going to go ahead and get started. Good evening and welcome to the University of Richmond. My name is Catherine Bauer. I am a professor of German studies and an associate dean for division one. I will be sort of the MC this evening for this session and just wanted to give you a brief overview of what we'll be covering. Um, we'll be talking about the divisional structure of the School of Arts and Sciences, which in some ways is an organizational principle rather than uh, something that's uh, natural or um, authentic. And with me this evening are the other divisional associate deans, Manuela Meyer and Kelling Donald. And I'll have them introduce themselves briefly, and then we will start um, giving you an overview of what you can do in the wonderful School of Arts and Sciences. So as I said, uh, my name is Catherine Bauer, and I uh, teach in the Department of Languages, Literatures, and Cultures, which you will see referred to later in this presentation. And I'll now turn this over to Manuela for her brief introduction. Thank you very much, Dr. Bauer. My name is Manuela Meyer, and I am a professor in the Department of History who teaches in Division II, otherwise known as the Humanities and Social Sciences, and I specialize in the history of Latin America and the Caribbean. And now on to my colleague, Dr. Donald. Hi, everyone. I'm Kelly Donald. I'm a professor in the chemistry department. My work focuses primarily on theoretical or computational chemistry, which essentially means using mathematical methods to try to solve chemical problems. And I'm the associate dean with special responsibilities for division three, which generally defined covers the, the sciences. So I'll hand over to Dr. Bauer again. Okay, thank you. So the School of Arts and Sciences is essentially the heart of the university. Why is it the heart of the university? Not only does it contain all of the disciplines that we've just described in our brief introductions, but every student who becomes an undergraduate at the University of Richmond is a student of arts and sciences from the very beginning. They may then continue on and decide to major in one of the other schools, one of the other undergraduate schools. And if you have that interest, there are other sessions on those schools that you can attend. The School of Arts and Sciences offers you the opportunity to combine or select majors from 23 different departments and 11 different interdisciplinary programs. And I'd like to say, as I was noting, that the divisional arrangement is a structural arrangement and disciplines themselves in some ways are inherently interdisciplinary just by the virtue of what you would need to know in order to be, uh, become sort of a master of that discipline. So in my own discipline, for example, which is German studies, it's not just about learning the language or uh, understanding the grammar or amassing a certain amount of vocabulary, but you need to understand something about the culture, you need to know something about the philosophy, about the journalistic practices, about literary practices. So as a field, and that's why it's referred to as German studies, it is very interdisciplinary. And uh, Manuela, Dr. Meyer's field is also very important uh, for my field since I work on Holocaust studies and um, contemporary political satire, all of those things uh, require a breadth of knowledge as well as depth of knowledge. And that's something that we really uh, emphasize in the School of Arts and Sciences and what makes it a very exciting place to be because you really um, can, the, the, the sky is the limit in terms of what you can combine. And many, many of our students double major or double minor and explore paths that really cross the disciplines and integrate the divisions. So we've already given you an overview of the divisions when we introduced ourselves. So, so division one, arts, languages, and cultures has been my bailiwick, um, division two, Dr. Meyer, and division three, Dr. Donald. I will now speak briefly about some of the opportunities you have in division one. So here you see uh, some images of students' work, and Dr. Donald will be referring to these later on in the presentation when he talks about the student symposium, which is kind of a culmination of students' work in their major and shows uh, the, excuse me, the, the great impact of uh, faculty mentored research, as well as mastery and um, sort of autonomy on the part of the students, which they arrive at after their four years as undergraduates at Richmond. 
So the departments in Division I include the ones that you see listed here, Art and Art History, Classical Studies, where you can also learn Ancient Greek, uh, Latin, English, which is the study of English literature in context, but also a lot of social science references and looking at um, ways that uh, literature addresses how people live in society. Latin American, Latino and Iberian studies, languages, literatures and cultures, music, theater and dance, and then the interdisciplinary programs, film studies and linguistics. And I did neglect to mention something when I was giving you the introduction that the liberal arts is really at the heart of what we do in arts and sciences. And the liberal arts is really a very much a synthetic study of ways that we think and adapt and really emphasizes uh, practical and theoretical aspects of knowledge. And one of the other things that I meant to mention earlier is the advantage of being in the School of Arts and Sciences, offering a low faculty student ratio and many opportunities for faculty student research. In addition, many of the general education courses that you've probably looked at as you look at the new SPIDERS website um, are housed in Arts and Sciences. And that includes currently six uh, field of study areas, many of which are offered through the School of Arts and Sciences, as well as first year seminars, which are taught by faculty across the schools. And there is a second language requirement, which you'll see in division one is primarily where that happens. Although there are some elective choices that take place in division two. So the interdisciplinary connections are critical, as I mentioned earlier, and you will see in the way that people move forward through pathways through their careers, that this is something that also echoes um, that theme. And so these are some of the areas where students in division one have gone on to pursue careers. And I did wanna say that a liberal arts education is very important for developing you for uh, the global marketplace because it addresses what makes us human, how do we respond as humans, how can we synthesize knowledge and skills to tackle the problems we face as a society and as a planet. And this requires a lot of uh, synthetic and interdisciplinary thinking. And as a segue to uh, the discussion of division two, I'd like to point out a couple of areas here where you can see where students who have gone on to work in diplomacy or law are clearly combining areas in division two. So diplomacy uh, involves political science, law involves things uh, that are also connected to PPL, which Dr. Meyer will be talking about, and NGOs can bring in together things from division three as well, as well as uh, science, ecology, et cetera. And naturally graduate school is also an aspect of what people have gone on to do um, who have graduated with majors in division one. So I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Meyer to talk about Division Two. Thank you, Dr. Bauer. So welcome, you spiders. It is a pleasure to be here with you today. Again, my name is Dr. Manuela Meyer, and I am the Associate Dean of the Humanities and Social Sciences, otherwise known as Division Two, in the School of Arts and Sciences. While these terms, humanities and social sciences, may seem to be a bit alien, I hope to debunk them a bit and in doing so, underscore their significance to a liberal arts education. I will also highlight the range of academic and, <clears throat> and interdisciplinary programs in the division so as to plant seeds in your minds about what you may want to explore while at UR. So first and foremost, what are the humanities? The humanities are academic disciplines that study human culture, or my favorite definition, the humanities are disciplines of memory and imagination, telling us where we have been and helping us envision where we are going. From an academic standpoint, the humanities include the study of history, philosophy, religious studies, journalism, and other fields. Humanities research adds to our knowledge of the world as scholars investigate differences between cultures and communities around the world and across time, consider the ways art is made and received, or unveil the, the undercurrents that have shaped history. A humanities education encourages students to think, to think critically and, cre and creatively, to reason and to ask questions. 
people from different walks of life across philosophical and political perspectives agree on the importance of the humanities. Famed Star Wars director George Lucas said this of the humanities, the sciences are the how and the humanities are the why. Why are we here? Why do we believe in the things we believe? I don't think you can have the how without the why. Former President Ronald Reagan also spoke to the transformative nature of the humanities when he stated, the arts and humanities teach us who we are and what we can be. They lie at the very core of the culture of which we are a part. To put it succinctly, the humanities are a foundational component of a liberal arts education. So are the social sciences. What exactly are the social sciences? I confess, I was one of those first year college students whose eyes glazed over whenever I heard the term social science. At least there was the word human in the humanities, the social <laughs> sciences, who, what? So the social sciences are understood as a branch of learning that examines society's institutions, their structures, theoretical foundations, evolution and interrelationships and how they affect and are affected by human behavior. Social scientists are dedicated to better understanding the phenomena of human expertise and enterprise and social interaction and organization. In other words, they study the how and why of what people do or should do. The social science disciplines customarily include anthropology and sociology, education, geography and the environment, political science, rhetoric and communication studies. Is there a hard division or separation between the humanities and the social sciences? No. The two branches of knowledge can often have critical areas of overlap as learners use the same theoretical and methodological tools to approach a critical topic or question. Both the humanities and social sciences use analytical and interpretive approaches to learn more about the human world. The School of Arts and Sciences also offers support for interdisciplinary study through a number of programs that offer majors within the Bachelor of Arts degree. They are American Studies, Classical Civilization, Cognitive Science, Environmental Studies, Film Studies, Geography, Global Studies, a program known as Philosophy, Politics, Economics, and Law, PPEL, and Women, Gender, and Sexuality Studies, excuse me, Women, Gender, and Sexuality Studies, WGSS, and to be newly launched this fall, Africana Studies, Environmental Studies, Interdisciplinary Studies, and Mathematical Economics are the interdisciplinary major options within the Bachelor of Science degree. At this point, I want to highlight a specific department that bridges the humanities, the social sciences, and the sciences. And that department is health studies. In this department, students are introduced to a broad spectrum of health issues, including sociocultural influences on health, health behavior and management, systems of health care, epidemiology, and more. Alumni enter careers in fields such as public policy, social work, and health data analysis. Indeed, the department prepares students for careers in one of the many non-clinical areas of health care that ultimately require then a broad base of knowledge in the humanities, the social sciences, and the sciences. So at this point, my colleague, Dr. Kelling, Donald will now talk about division three the sciences. All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Meyer. So hi again, everyone. Uh, I'm Kevin Donald, the Associate Dean for the, the Special Responsibilities for Division 3. And Division 3 is the set of departments in, in the School of Arts and Sciences that deal with that cover mathematics and the, and the natural sciences. And these are, this is, so this is the sciences broadly defined and most of the offerings in the sciences are housed. If you have visited the campus before, you probably have seen or heard about the Gottwald Science Building. I have a, a picture of part of it behind me here. So um, that, that might remind you if you have been on, on, on if at times when you have been on campus. 
And we have in this Gottwald Science Building, Chemistry, Physics, and Biology. And then in a separate building, Richmond Hall, we have Psychology. And in another building, we have Mathematics and Computer Science, which is Jefferson Hall. And together, these departments constitute Division Three. And as Dr. Barr said earlier, the division is not something that you will especially notice if you are just a if you're a student on campus, you will find that you'll be moving around between different buildings and different types of courses and classes uh, quite fluidly once you begin your time, your time here. But I want to point out that there are a wide range of, of opportunities in the sciences um, that span, for example, options for study abroad in organic chemistry, along with other general study abroad options that you will encounter during your time here. A feature of the of the School of Arts and Sciences is a wide range too of opportunities that students will have to do research with faculty members in close mentorship or what we call the the apprenticeship type type model and I'll talk some more about that about that later on. And and so the in the school of uh, in the School of Arts and Sciences, if you are interested in some of the subject areas that are on the screen, then you would be having a major in in Division Three, which which I'm talking about talking about now. As you see on the screen as well, there are six departments in the sciences here at the University of Richmond, and these are biology, chemistry, computer science, mathematics and mathematics and statistics, physics and psychology. And up until last year, we had a department of mathematics and computer science. So those departments were administratively one unit, but we now have separately a department of mathematics and statistics and a department of, of computer science. Again, this is information on the structure of the, of the departments not so much any restriction on what you can do. Uh, we had computer science majors before, along with mathematics majors, and those will still be functioning essentially, essentially the, the same. We also have two interdisciplinary majors. And one is, uh, if we could go back to the, uh, thank you, uh, to, the, to this slide. We have biochemistry and molecular biology, and we have integrated and inclusive and inclusive sciences. Biochemistry and molecular biology, as the name suggests, is a combination of courses drawn from primarily chemistry and, and biology to serve students who are especially interested in biochemical questions and molecular, molecular biology. Students who, who draw on majors from what we call BMB, this interdisciplinary program, usually are interested in graduate school in biochemistry or in or other options. Some pre-med students are BMB majors as well and so on. The integrated inclusive science program is especially geared to students who come in with a wide range of interests in the sciences and would like to see in action some of the overlap of those disciplines early on. You probably already know from high school that there are not hard boundaries between, for example, biology and chemistry, because we have, for instance, chemistry going on inside us. And so it's difficult to, to strip biology completely away from chemistry and vice versa. There are also ways in which physics integrate with biology, because as human beings, we can move and, and we have characteristics that are governed in the same way by as other things by the laws of physics. And so integrated and inclusive science is a program that helps to emphasize some of those transgressions of boundaries and overlaps among the traditional, the traditional disciplines. One other point that I'd like to make as we talk about interdisciplinarity is that even though they are not programs per se in the, in, in the division. We also have a neuroscience concentration. We have 
uh, cognitive science that students can study as well. There is interdisciplinary physics, which helps to show overlaps between physics and other disciplines. And there are other opportunities too to combine your interests in creative ways. There is even a science leadership program that's run through the, the leadership school, but requires that students major in one of the science disciplines as well as take a major or minor in, in leadership. So that's one of the ways in which we have some overlaps, not just within the School of Arts and Sciences, but also between the school and the and other schools on on campus. Now, if we could on the on this next slide, we see the, some of the very diverse options that become open to to students who major in the in the sciences. There are any number of opportunities that a degree in the sciences can open up for you. Some of the options that are listed here um, include, for example, science journalism which is a really nice way to combine two different areas on, on campus, but to bring them together in, in, a, in, a coherent, in a coherent fashion. And especially following the pandemic, I think I would not have to emphasize too much the need to be able to communicate science as clearly as possible. The, there, is also, there, uh, there are other options too, for example, serving in consulting or patent law. There are several research options. You can also, we do not have an engineering program here, but from a major in several of the sciences, you can move into, into engineering. And then of course you can apply scientific knowledge to, to public service. You know, politicians also need some knowledge of, of, the, of, the, of the sciences because they are making laws related to, to the, to the sciences. And so there are many options that you see here. A few options that are not included on this slide, for example, that may be of interest are, for instance, the history of science, if you want to work in, in, in helping people to understand the evolution of, of science. That's one place where a science major may, might help. And also science fiction writing, maybe one, maybe something else that you, you might be interested in in doing and the knowledge, a deep knowledge of the sciences can be useful in a career like that. So over to, to Dr. Barr. So given that we've talked about all these uh, exciting opportunities for uh, majoring and minoring in arts and sciences, I actually wanted to turn it over to Dr. Meyer to discuss briefly how you go about doing this. How do you declare a major minor or double major, double minor in the School of Arts and Sciences? So upon entering, you are every student will be assigned an advisor that will work closely with them until that student decides upon a major. Their primary academic focus and the subject most, uh, most of their classes will surround. Each major has specific requirements and will ultimately result in a Bachelor of Arts and or a Bachelor of Science. A minor, simply put, is a secondary academic discipline, another subject to focus on in addition to the major. Students often use minors to complement their major or to explore a completely different discipline. At UR, students do not have to pick a major until the end of their sophomore year. This gives them plenty of time to explore various subjects and disciplines to see which ones are of interest. Once they declare a major, they are assigned an advisor from that major field of study. Students and their families listening who are unsure about their majors should not worry. Many students switch majors. Myself, for example, I think I switched majors three times in college. And indeed, many students at UR are double majors with minors. Students are not required to declare a minor. If they, if they decide to do so, based on the necessary coursework required for a given academic program, they have until the fall of their senior year to do so. 
So if this embarrassment of academic riches is still not enough, the School of Arts and Sciences also offers a self-designed interdisciplinary major. This interdisciplinary major provides students with opportunities to propose and to pursue with faculty supervision a unique program of study leading either to a Bachelor of Arts or a Bachelor of Science degree with a major in interdisciplinary studies. The one program that only provides a minor is education and society. And this specific minor encourages students to examine education as an institution and its role in society with a focus on policy and politics, gender and ethnicity, and issues that specifically surround urban education. This minor does not lead to teacher licensure. It does prepare students, however, to examine the obstacles facing education systems and reform initiatives in the United States. Notwithstanding the many potential majors and minors that one may explore and ultimately follow, ANS faculty is composed of excellent teachers and active scholars. The enthusiasm for mentoring undergraduates can be seen in the courses faculty teach, as well as their individual research initiatives. Whether it's in the lab, the art studio, or the archives, students are encouraged to get involved in undergraduate research as early as their first year on campus. Taking part in undergraduate research opportunities can help students supplement classroom learning, refine career goals, and ultimately prepare for the rigors of graduate school. Students can choose to work on a project of their own design or as part of a faculty member's research grant. All students conducting research select a faculty member who advises them throughout the research process. For many students, research projects culminate in the Arts and Sciences Convocation and Student Symposium. Dr. De excuse me, Dr. Donald now can tell us about that exciting day where students showcase amazing and insightful research projects for all to see. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Meyer. So when you have uh, good news, you want to share it. And this is the opportunity that the Arts and Sciences Symposium provides. So as Dr. Meyer said, there are many opportunities for students to participate in undergraduate research. And one thing I want to, or a couple of things I want to, to emphasize is that there are many ways to get involved. Uh, one way would be to approach a faculty member whose work you're interested in. So if you're on campus and you see somebody talk about their work or you look on the faculty website and you see some area that you are particularly particularly interested in. For example, if you see something on the politics of, of Uruguay and you are interested in, in, in politics in Uruguay, then you can talk to the faculty member and uh, ask if you can do research with with that particular particular person. There are, and so you can initiate the research. Faculty members may approach you based on the apparent interest from work or discussions that they have had, that they have had with you or, or, or done with you. And then there are also different models. So you can work in a mentored way or an apprenticeship approach that, as I mentioned before, where you're working closely with a faculty member and the topic is assigned to you and you spend some time understanding what the work is about and then you gain an increasing amount of ownership of the of the project as you work with with the faculty mentor and then there is what might be described as a supervised model where you have a particular interest and you find a faculty member who can guide you through the through the process one thing I'll suggest is that you begin as early as possible so that you will have the longest possible trajectory during your time at the university to build on the area of research and the topic that you are interested in learning in learning more about. I can assure you too that there are several benefits to, to research, along with just learning more about the topic that you are interested in, you will get greater 
skills in, in writing well, you will learn to read critically, you will learn more about ethics in research, more about research methods and partnering with faculty have its benefits as well, as well as working with colleagues and with your peers in some cases in teams. And also learning as well at the same time how to independently contribute to an effort to develop essentially new new knowledge. So there are many benefits to, to doing research. One benefit is the opportunity to share or to publish your work in some way. And at the Arts and Sciences Symposium, which is usually held at the end of the of the second semester, the end of the spring semester in April, you have the prime chance to, to do that. The picture here shows one student talking with our on, on the on the right shows a picture of our president talking with a with a student about work that she is presenting at the Arts and Sciences Symposium. And students present like this. Uh, several students from several disciplines, so not just in the sciences, but from across the university. And there are also other ways of presenting as well. So most students present posters, writing up summaries of how they did their work and what they found. But some students gave oral presentations, other students gave creative presentations. Uh, for instance, uh, a film that they have put together or exhibit a, 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 a piece of art that they develop in the process of thinking about a particular era in, in art in art history. And so there are many different ways in which you can participate, but the a and Symposium is one of the culminating events for, the, for work by students in the School of, of, arts and, of Arts and Sciences. One other event that is also important at the end of the academic year, especially for students as they get to their final year, is the Arts and Sciences Convocation. And this is an opportunity to celebrate academic achievement in the School of Arts and Sciences. It's a recognition of honor students who are students who sign up to do a little bit extra to go deeper on a topic, which usually too will result in a presentation at the Arts and Sciences Symposium, a chance to celebrate them and to affirm and showcase some of the outstanding accomplishments of, of students. And so it's a Along with the arts, with this student symposium, the a and convocation is a chance to, to celebrate at the end of the, of the academic year. And if you have any questions on either of these, of these, these events and research in general, we would be happy to talk more in the question and answer, and answer session. But before that, we will, um, you will see in the, on the next slide, some examples of the kinds of topics that are covered in the symposium. Yes, and as, as Dr. Donald said, uh, these presentations from students take um, myriad forms. Um, you saw in some of the photos earlier in the presentation from Division One, there was a student who was uh, talking about her choreography piece in dance. There was another student who had designed costumes for a theater piece. And so you'll see a variation in the ways that students are presenting their work. Here is just a selection uh, that gives you some insights, kind of a sampling across the divisions of work that was presented at this year's uh, student symposium. So one of these pieces, A Sense of Place, was a short film done through the film studies program about the student's cross-generational experience of the pandemic. And then you see in the Italian studies uh, topic, that really does combine not only a knowledge of Italian language and culture, but very much a political and historical look at a connection between fascism in the 30s and 40s and populism in contemporary Italy. The journalism piece was featured on uh, the University of Richmond Magazine. Some of you may have seen that. It really did almost uh, combine urban planning, uh, ecology, ethics of place with journalistic style, but written by a student who's also a professional cyclist. The geography paper, as you can see, also involves issues of philosophy and ethics. 
as well as sustainability and environmental justice. And I find the ones in division three also quite interesting for some of the reasons that uh, Dr. Donald was saying as well, that you really can't uh, separate these disciplines in some ways. The boundaries are very porous and you can see that in biology, there's something here that connects again to urban planning and in mathematics, something that you might not imagine that there is a mathematical assessment of bodily functions. And so when uh, Dr. Donald was saying, can't really separate chemistry and physics from biology. Well, mathematics has a role there as well in terms of helping with medicine and what Dr. Meyer was talking about in terms of health studies, this kind of synthesis of various disciplines and fields. And so uh, these topics really kind of showcase that. So for those of you who have questions, it would be great if you could use the Q&A function. There's a, a, a field on your screen, hopefully that you can see. And if you can just uh, put your questions in there and we will do our best to answer them. And this will be recorded. So if you didn't have a chance to stay for the whole thing, um, you would be able to go on to the YouTube channel and see this uh, later on. But for now, I'm going to turn this over to the Q&A section, which we will all be happy to answer any questions you might have. And we really are looking forward to seeing you on campus in August and welcome to the University of Richmond. So I see a question on how, how um, easy is it to, to double major? I'm gonna stop sharing so you can see us more easily. Um, so it's extremely easy to double major. As a matter of fact, I would say the majority of students at, in the School of Arts and Sciences have a double major. Some of them do what Dr. Donald was saying. They will do a cross school double major where they may have a major in leadership studies and a major in, in one of the disciplines in arts and sciences. We also have students who double major with the business school. I've actually seen this rather frequently, people who do inter international business and um, some, other, some other field. They may do uh, a minor because the business school does have a lot of requirements. So it does make it easier to just do a major in business school and minor in arts and sciences in some program, but it's, it's quite easy and quite common. Any other questions? This is an awkward format and I know it's weird because you you could see us, we can't see you. I'm not a, I'm not a big fan of the webinar, um, but if you do have the desire to type in your question, please go ahead and do so. Okay, this is a, a question about transferring AP credits. Um, so this is something that when, when Dr. Meyer was talking about declaring a major, she also mentioned advising and undeclared student advising. So when you come to the University of Richmond and you may already have started this process, you have summer advising that occurs. So you'll be meeting with a peer advisor and then you'll be assigned a summer advisor. Some of you will have summer advisors who will continue to be your advisors during your first uh, semesters at the University of Richmond. And your AP credits will be sent to our registrar's office. And so your advisor should get that information. I think it's usually sometime in July. And depending on what your AP scores are, you may or may not uh, be able to get college credit for them. And there is information on the New Spiders uh, website that gives you that uh, information. It looks like uh, Andy has put the chart um, into the chat. So take a look at that. And now we have a question about PPEL and that's the program in philosophy, politics, economics and law program. So this is increasingly a very popular major amongst our students. And it's important to note that there are various paths to this particular um, major, given that um, students 
focus in either um, in either the political science path, the philosophy path, or or the economics path. And it is a very popular program in the sense that it really represents, again, some of the breadth of the kinds of interdisciplinary work that both students and faculty members are doing. And oftentimes students in, in this particular program actually go on to have very rich internship programs while in college and afterwards upon graduation enter law school public policy as well as various fields so it is a very popular major and there's various paths within the within this interdisciplinary major program and oftentimes again students pick from philosophy either political science or economics Yes, it is possible to choose a specific concentration. Absolutely, within the interdisciplinary field such as PPEL, yes. We'll give you another minute or so to collect your thoughts if you're pondering a question that you'd like to ask uh, while we have you here in, live uh, in this webinar. And otherwise, I would like to say um, that the PowerPoint will be available through the recording. And any one of us, you, we're easy to find. You can, uh, you have our names. Any one of us would be pleased to answer any questions you would have um, about arts and sciences, about majors, minors. Um, specific to either our departments or to our divisions. Um, that is why we are here. So happy to take those via email if they occur to you after the session ends. All right, well, thanks everyone for coming and I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening wherever you may be. And we look forward to seeing you on campus in August. Uh, as I said before, it looks like there might be one last question. Okay, yes. Uh, do some majors within the school have a direct connection with study abroad opportunities? Yes, there are uh, programs, particularly in, in my home department, languages, literatures and cultures that, um, require or encourage study abroad. There's also, as I mentioned, in the School of Business, an international business major, where you're required to spend a semester abroad. Um, and there are other programs in the divisions, as uh, Dr. Donald and Dr. Meyer might have mentioned, where study abroad is, is highly encouraged and certainly is an option that enriches your experience, regardless of what your major is. And also just finally, in the program of global study, study abroad is a requirement. Mm -hmm. So, right. Thank you for pointing that out. Yeah, there is there is an option. This is not a requirement, but an option for doing organic chemistry at St Andrews in in Scotland. So that's that's one option that some students some students take to do organic chemistry organic chemistry abroad. So. Okay, Andy Gurka, I think has another session coming up. I'm not, I don't recall what it is, but if you have signed up for another session that will be starting in 15 minutes. Thanks to everyone for joining us. And thanks to my colleagues, Dr. Donald and Dr. Meyer for all of your insights into the various divisions. And thanks uh, Andy for being such a discreet uh, moderator in the background and making sure everything goes smoothly. Thanks everyone. and. Have a good evening.